Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it's Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast, presented, of course, by DraftKings. Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, boatload of podcasts, fantasy feast every Wednesday with Joe Dolan, even money for betting every Tuesday with Steve Fezzik. If you didn't listen or watch Darren Waller, the tight end for the Raiders last night or this morning, just an awesome, awesome interview with a very impressive young man. A lot to get into with him, with his background, how he overcame substance abuse issues. And then we had to talk contract a little bit. There is no way. He can't say it. I'll say it. There is no way that guy should play football for what he's supposed to play football this year. We'll see what happens. He said his agent's working on it. And if decisions have to be made, decisions have to be made. I like it. I also like this show. Because we go through and talk about every team's draft. Everybody else moves on. Not us. You can check me out on social media, at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. You can always check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Join today, as always, by Emery Hunt, at F-Ball Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube. And today, we got Ryan O'Halloran the AFC West expert for the week. He covers the Broncos for the Denver Pro for the Denver Post. Ryan, O'Halloran or O'Halloran? O'Halloran. Am I Halloran or am I Hollerin? Uh, most people, ROH for most people. So Ryan O'Halloran. O'Halloran. Okay, yeah. okay. I forgot. Ryan covered the – Ryan, you covered Washington my last year, right? My first year covering Washington was 04. Did I miss you by a year? Oh, no. Okay. I was. Were you there in 07? 07. Yes, I was. Yeah, that was my last year. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. Um, awesome. Really appreciate you coming on the show, Ryan. It's been great as we go through and get Emery's expert opinion on these various team drafts to have someone who covers the division and covers a team in the division for a living like you. Uh, let's dive right into it. And wow, Denver Broncos, they got them. I guess my question, before we even get into the draft stuff with the Broncos, Ryan, how did they get them? Russell Wilson, like, wh- why was that the choice? Well, I, 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 probably two things. One, they, they put together a, a heck of an offer that included a former first-round pick in Noah Fant, a starting defensive end in Shelby Harris, plus two ones and two twos. So the Broncos had that draft capital to provide the Seattle that maybe other teams didn't, including that ninth overall pick this year. And then the second part of that, Russell Wilson, like what the Broncos were selling, and, and he waived his no trade. And, you know, over the course of a month, you know, late January to late February, early part of March, once he was brought in uh, to the equation, you know, he, he waived that, and now he's a Denver Bronco. And um, he has not participated in a – Training camp practice yet, but I'm referring to him as Mayor Russ because he sort of has taken over the town. <laughs> I, I guess my question is, why did he? Wh- why was Denver his choice? Like I, I get that Denver offered the most or offered a lot, but it seemed like that's. I mean, maybe he's just saying that, but it seemed like that's where he wanted to go. What about it was so enticing to him? Do you think? I, I think I think you look at the you look at the depth chart at the skill position. Uh, you know, receiver, running back, you know, they were able to get Russell Wilson to Denver without trading any of their top top receivers, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, um, Albert Oakley Boonham, the tight end, um, has some potential. So I think that was attractive. Javante Williams is the running back. So I think I think that was the big thing is, and, and that's what I thought was going to, and I, I, I thought originally that's what's, what was going to keep the Broncos from getting an Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson is they would have had to give up so many of their current players that the quarterback would have said, okay, who am I playing with? I'm not going to go there. But they're able to swing the trade with a lot of draft picks. So I think that's the main thing. And he's joining a loaded division. The competitor in him says, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Well, you know, I probably would have. But uh, <laughs> it, it is, uh, I mean, it's it's a, definitely a challenge. And yeah, I think the other options were Carolina and maybe Washington. I think 
you know, being on the being in this part of the country for a decade, maybe maybe uh, uh, was more attractive to him as well. Emery, they, he mentioned they didn't have a first round pick, Denver. So in the second round, they got Nick Benito, an edge rusher from Oklahoma, and in the third round, Greg Dulcich, the tight end from UCLA. Tell me about those guys. Yeah, Benito is someone that's a, a you know point shoot rusher, someone that is strictly hey see guy go get guy he's that, that type of blitzer a little bit undersized but if you need him in the situation of role he fits perfectly to what denver wants to do and dulcich was my number two h back big fan of his game compared his game to george kittle and what he does after the catch this dude can make things happen with the football in his hands and will pair up perfectly with elbow and, and does a great job in my opinion in playing off a team's number one option so for me they were able to knock out out the park with those two picks coming in, in on on day uh, on day two, but it really helps them out because. Yeah, I don't understand the Benito thing. His like, it seems like he. I guess I was surprised he didn't get drafted higher. Or wasn't more highly thought of. His numbers are ridiculous, Emery. It, I think for a lot of you know, if it, if you're blitzing him, it it ties into your point. He's probably going higher, but every, it's everything else you know, where he's he has a little bit more roughness around the, the edges, so to speak. Um, and that's where he's going to have to grow. So, so right now as a situational rusher blitzer ideal, but they're going to, you know, bring him along slowly to groom him in everyone in uh, every other aspect or facet of his game. Is it fair to say Ryan, that, that Dulcich is basically, you know, they're hoping filling in for where Noah Fant was. Um, I, I think the combination of Dulcich and Albert O uh, will probably match Noah fans production. Noah led the team in catches last year. Uh, you know, you met, Emory mentioned that Greg's receiving ability, his yards per catch last year was third among FBS uh, tight ends. So he can really stretch the field, run down the seam. And that's what they tried to do with fan, but they just, to me, they just never figured out what Noah did best. They had him moving laterally. With a big guy like that, and I think is the same way, get him moving down the field so he can catch it in stride, do some things that way. So I think I think Dulcich and Albert O can both have an impact, you know, but there's <laughs> there's only one football and it starts with the receiver. So it'll be interesting to see how Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett integrate these two tight ends. And this real quick on Benito, um, I think that was a need pick because Bradley Chubb has not been able to stay healthy. It is a free agent after the season. Randy Gregory has not been able to stay eligible or healthy in his career. So I think they felt the need for that third edge rusher. And, you know, they list him at 240 pounds. So, uh, Emory, I think your, your description is pretty pretty accurate in terms of a situational guy orig- initially because you just don't know if he can play the run in a 3-4 front. Let's get to the rest of their thing. It's, it's interesting. I didn't realize they had so many picks. Yeah. Fourth round, they got Damari Mathis, the corner from Pitt. And a D tackle from Iowa State. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name, yes. bro. Uh, round five, they got Delarin Turner Yell, the safety from Oklahoma. They like Oklahoma guys and they like Wisconsin guys. Montreal, Washington, wide receiver from Sanford. I guarantee they could have 30 picks, Ryan. I guarantee Emory's going to talk about the wide receiver from Sanford. I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, Luke Wattenberg, the center from Washington. Then they took two Wisconsin guys. Henningsen, the D tackle from Wisconsin, and Fayon Hicks, the corner from Wisconsin. Give me a guy or two, Emory, that really stand out to you there. Well, duh, Montreal Williams. Uh, watch the, is, the funny part is when you watch that Florida Sanford game, you came away impressed with Kair Elam, Montreal Washington, Liam Welsh, the quarterback. It was so much fun to watch that game because Sanford was giving Florida the business all throughout that contest. And, and Washington was having himself a great day against that secondary. And I was shocked that he got drafted because you thought, okay, you know, FCS guy, they're probably going to, you know, knock him down and, and he's a shorter guy. They're probably going to wait till undrafted free agent to, to really pick him up. But that speaks volumes of what he was able to do against Florida and what the league thought of his speed, his explosiveness, his yards after the catch. This is someone that can really make things happen. Gives him sort of what they already have in KJ Hamler. So it's going to be fascinating to see how Washington fits in the midst. He's going to have to play special teams, uh, obviously, initially as a rookie. Any of those other guys jump out to you, Ryan, as guys that they think might have a chance this year? 
Well, I'll just I'll just piggyback on Montreal Washington. Right now, he's their returner. That's going to be his ticket to make this team. If they activate five receivers on game day, he'd be that fifth guy. Um, you know, you mentioned that Florida game. As he said, hey, without that game, I don't get drafted. And the Broncos pretty much said the same thing. So th- this return game here in Denver, granted, there's a lot of touchbacks in the home games, but you just haven't gotten a lot out of that spot in the last couple of years. So they they you know they had three fifth round picks. Said, so, hey. Let's take a flyer on this kid, see if he can, you know, catch you know, a little bit of a returning lightning in a bottle. But um, Demari Mathis is interesting to me. Um, you know, a lot of pass breakups, but a lot of penalties at Pitt. You know, this team, uh, you know, sort of set at the top three corners with with Sertan, Darby, and Williams. But if Mathis can, have, you know, integrate quickly, he has a chance to beat out Michael Ujumudier and Asang Basia for that fourth corner spot. Which, depending on how they use their dime. Maybe it is four corners and two safeties. Maybe he can get on the field and, and play a little bit. So, but you know, what's interesting about this draft is, you know, it's it's a worker B draft. You know, they had so many of their starters already set. They're drafting for depth. And so if I had to pick one guy who, who could have the biggest impact, I think it could be Montreal Washington. Let's move on, Emory, to the Hold Kansas up. City Chiefs. Hold up, oh, Ross. The the undrafted free agents, you could clearly see uh where Denver had a mission they're trying to improve the return game because you bring in Jalen Virgil from App State who's one of the better returners um explosive guy Caden Davis out of Northwest Missouri State fantastic special team he played on all teams uh for Northwestern State uh, Northwest Missouri State and also Tyreek McAllister I mentioned him on this show before out of Charleston they have so many pro prospects coming out that program their quarterback guy Myers just got signed by the New Jersey Generals but Tyreek McAllister is someone that is instant offense. You go back to the spring season, the zoo was averaging like 200 something yards a game rushing. Um, and so he's a sprint draw monster. He is someone that can play running back or slot receiver. So it's fascinating to see this, you know, and even uh, Jaquan McMillan out of ECU slot corner. They're trying to improve somewhere in the return game. And I feel like you can see that with the guys they brought in as undrafted free agents. Interesting. Yeah, Ryan, you'll learn. If you ever need to talk to anybody about a smaller school guy or about uh, a an FCS guy or undrafted free agents, Emory is absolutely your guy. As for the Chiefs, because of that Tyreek Hill trade, they had about a zillion picks. I think we already touched on Emory, them getting Trent McDuffie and Karloftis, a couple guys that might start in the first round after that. I'm curious what you think about Sky Moore, Brian Cook, Leo Chenal, their their day two picks. I thought they hit a home run with those as well. Sky Moore is someone that can instantly help them right away, also helps out in the return game. I know he had a lot of fans uh, throughout the course of the scouting process, guys wanting him to go in the first round, but they got him in round two. And Brian Cook was someone I know I've known for a while because I broadcasted a lot of their games when he was at Howard. Um, and he was a tremendous corner there and also safety was coached up well there and was able to transfer, go back home to Cincinnati where he was able to start. And, and Chanel is another one that was a pre-draft guy that had a lot of buzz um, in how he plays the position. I think he's more along the line with what they already have in Nick Bolton. Uh, so he got good depth there. But I love the more and Cook selection because it gives them good, versatile players uh, out there on the perimeter. Cook is someone that can be moved around. You won't see him give up big plays like – uh, you saw last year with, uh, you know, with Sorensen. Uh, I know that name stings hard for Kansas City fans, but Cook won't make those mistakes in coverage. Ryan, what's sort of the perception in Denver about the Chiefs right now? Because it seemed like after they traded Tyree Kill, there was like celebration throughout the land in the AFC West. Well, yeah, I think I think the the consensus is this is the Chiefs division until proven otherwise. The Broncos have lost 13 straight games at Kansas City. That's that's really tough to do in the NFL for a division rival that has sunk resources into the you know the roster and the cap like the Broncos have. So I mean, I nationally everybody said, well, the Broncos Raiders are the biggest rival. The Broncos hate the Chiefs. I mean, let's put it that way. I mean, that's what happens. You're at top, but you look at Kansas City's draft. Is they traded down, uh, they traded up nine spots in that first round, yet they still had four of the top 62 picks. So I thought they did a good job addressing needs, but also adding depth. And you can do that when you have the quarterback in place. You can, hey, really pinpoint a couple spots and not have to reach. And I think McDuffie will be a good player right away. Uh, Karloftis will be a guy who can get some matchups opposite of Frank Clark. 
And then you know, Brian Cook, you mentioned him as a safety. And they signed Justin Reed to you know basically replace Matthew on the back end. But you know Nick Sorensen, he basically had a he had a career against the Broncos. It was everybody else that left a lot to be desired. So I think they they upgraded there. Um, the rest of the picks, Emery, Joshua Williams, cornerback from Fayetteville State, guarantee Ryan guaranteed that's who he talks about. Darian Kennard, guard from Kentucky. Jalen Watson, corner Washington State. Isaiah Pacheco, running back from Rutgers. And Nazi Johnson, cornerback from Marshall Emory. Yeah, there's two. There's Joshua Williams, Fayetteville State, which is, if you know Fayetteville State, they're a D2 program in the CIAA. And the best team in the CIAA the last four years has been Bowie State, has gone to the D2 playoffs and has won games in the playoffs, which is fascinating because Fayetteville State has produced three to four pro players in that time uh, frame. So they are good in terms of developing guys, getting homegrown guys, but they just can't beat Bowie State for whatever reason. Uh, but Williams is 6'3", about 200 pounds, you know, height, weight, speed guy, kind of like what they had in Legereus Sneed uh, when he came out of La Tech, being able to play corner and safety. So he's someone that uh, is a developmental player, but gives him that versatility. And you see that was a common theme with the guys they picked in the secondary. And Isaiah Pacheco was able to parlay – a really good hula bowl and a fantastic NFL PA bowl uh, into getting drafted. He is built like a muscle. You know, you, you find someone that runs as hard as he does, that cares about the game as hard as he does. They're going to find a role. I think he has a nice little lane as a short yardage goal line runner, a four minute offense site runner. Uh, definitely impressed with what he brings to the table. Any undrafted free agents? Jerry on Ely, because he was one of my favorite players coming out of high school. And so when you look at what they bring it in with him, returner, can he impact the, the return? He's one of the best baseball player prospects uh, coming out of high school as well. I know that was a whole thing. Is he going to play baseball or is he going to play football? Uh, but he's someone that can help them out, kind of fits the mode of what, you know, they look for at the position. Of, you know, someone that can really help out. And Justin Ross, obviously, uh, getting him for free uh, was one of the top receiving prospects in the country. Had the neck injury, so you kind of worry about his health. If he checks out medically, they got themselves a vertical high point player uh, for, for next to nothing as an undrafted free agent. I totally forgot about that. I mean, where where do you think he would have been drafted if he could have left after his freshman year? He probably would have been a first-round pick or yeah, he, close he, to it. He destroyed the college football playoff, especially the national championship game against Alabama. Now, I guess the good news is they discovered this like congenital condition and he had the surgery. So that's, but man, um, let's get to the Raiders. Another team, no first round pick, no second round pick. They did get Devontae Adams, which I guess I'm curious, Ryan, about that move. It's interesting, right? In, in the division that you cover, Tyreek Hill out, Devontae Adams in. What got more attention in Denver? What's more notable? Tyreek Hill leaving or Devontae Adams coming? Yeah, definitely Tyreek leaving. Uh, he just – it's a, a sensational player who just caused headaches all over the field. And, yeah, I think the Adams thing – the Bron you know, Broncos just haven't faced him a lot. So you know, so they're probably not on the fans' radar as much. And, you know, he, he – he was sort of in the conversation because, you know, people had the pie in the sky in January. Hey, and Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, combo platter in Denver. Well, you know, that wasn't going to happen. But uh, but with Adams, you know, going to the Raiders, this is why you drafted a player like Pat Sertan last year and passed on those quarterbacks, you know, because he's going to have to cover this guy two games a year. So uh, the Tyreek the Tyreek uh, trade got a lot more attention here in Denver. That makes sense. Looking at the Raiders picks – uh, let's start with the first three guys, Emery, because I've heard all these guys. And and the third round, they got Dylan Parham, the interior old lineman from Memphis. Fourth round, Zamir White, running back from Georgia. Nobody's better with running backs than you are. And then fourth round, Neil Farrell, the D tackle from LSU, I know people like. Yeah, Parham is someone that, that I was a, a big fan of. He's my number four center, um, and he was a former tight end. So you go from perimeter – you usually go from perimeter to tackle, but you go from perimeter down inside you know, to center. It speaks to your athleticism and versatility. So for me, I thought they got someone that, that can really play across the board, can play guard or center, but you increase your athleticism there. Zamir White, he reminds me a lot of Frank Gore and what he brings to the table. I think he's going to be a better pro uh, than he was in college because what, what we saw last year is what we saw from him 
coming out of high school. He was a ridiculous prospect. I had the two knee injuries in college before he was able to play a, a down in college. And so he was able to bounce back from that and start to regain that explosiveness and that burst. And you root for him personally, but you also love the player as as well. And um, getting Farrell, they wanted to get better on the defensive line. I'm looking at the, the depth chart here, and you see some older guys. So Farrell has a good chance, and Matthew Butler has a good chance. LSU has done a really good job in producing good interior defensive linemen in the last couple of years, and Farrell's the next in line. It's kind of weird, Ryan, to think about before we get Emery's thoughts on the undrafted guys and the late round guys for the Raiders and then the Chargers. I mean, the Broncos, for all the hype people are talking about, they were last. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I called that Chargers Raiders game. They were both knocking on the door. The Chiefs obviously host the AFC championship game again. Do you think it's realistic to think the Broncos are going to kind of go from, you know, last or worst to first? I know somebody does it every year. Um, but I'm assuming everybody's kind of buying into that, that 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 Russell can turn it around that quickly. Well, uh, I would say worse to second. Uh, I, I just right now this team still has some issues. Uh, you know, their offensive line, I think whenever a coaching staff says we're going to play the best five guys, to me, that's you don't know who they are. And that means you have questions at a couple spots and they do it at the center, right tackle. But uh, you know, to your earlier point about the Chiefs, I still would pick them first right now because of Mahomes. And then if the Broncos can ride that Wilson wave, you know, figure out the Raiders, beat the Chargers, I think they could finish second in this division. But you're going to have people that are going to pick them fourth in this division with a winning record. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, thoughts, Emery, on Thayer Munford, the tag from Ohio State, Britton Brown, running back UCLA or any of their undrafted guys. Yeah, it's funny how far, you know, Mayer has fallen. Because remember, at some point in time, people thought of him as a first-round pick. But, it, you know, so is the draft and the draft process. Undrafted, I was shocked to see Sincere McCormick go undrafted uh, because I thought he was someone that, you know, has a breakaway speed, led the nation in rushing in 2020. Uh, so I was shocked to see him go undrafted. But this draft as a whole is more about depth because the Raiders did all of their work in free agency. There, there's no rookie that's slated to step in, in on a too deep. You know, So this is something they really focus on. We're trying to get better now, and we'll worry about the future later. Let's get to the Chargers. Before we do, just a reminder, most importantly, myfrontpagestory.com. You got anniversaries. You got birthdays. We got Father's Day coming up in a couple weeks myfrontpagestory.com by far the best gift you can get your dad nobody knows what to get their dad nobody knows what to get their wife for their anniversary or or your parents myfrontpagestory.com trust me best gift ever all right let's get to the chargers it's interesting because they're another team ryan that it's like a lot of people i think peter king had him really high in his power rankings this morning but they're like, uh, unfortunately, right or wrong for me, they're like, I'll believe it when I yeah. see it. Like, I'll believe that they actually get it done when they do. Yeah. I mean, one of the phrases you hear is the Chargers are going to charge her. And which mean, to me is means sometimes they can't get out of their own way. They have a dynamic quarterback. But, you know, this Brandon Staley, who I think is, is going to be a fine NFL head coach, this, 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 you know, he'll be better in year two. Khalil Mack, what has he got left in the tank after a couple of injury plague seasons? Um, you know, Austin Eckler, can he stay healthy? You know, so they so they spent a lot of money re-signing their own people, then also adding some guys. Their draft was interesting to me. You know, they had they had two of the top 122 picks. I like the Zion Johnson thing. He's a plug and play guy, but with Adderley and James, I'm not sure what JT Woods, what's his role going to be right away if he even has one. What do you think, Emery? Let's talk about, obviously, I know you love Zion Johnson. We talked about him a lot here on the College Draft Podcast during the pre-draft process. You gave him a 90 grade, which is about as high as you give anyone. So he'll start for them, I think, at right guard. They still have a major issue at right tackle, in my mind. I don't know if it's Storm Norton again, but gosh, if I'm a Chargers fan and 
I'm going in the year with Storm Norton as my starter at right tackle. I'm not feeling like this is the year we're going all the way. Let's put it that way. But I am curious about your thoughts on JT Woods in the third round. I saw where Daniel Jeremiah, to Ryan's point, said that maybe this allows Derwin James to do some other things, frees him up. And that Daniel Jeremiah, by the way, does the color analyst for the Chargers games. I think that was the thought. What do you think of Woods as a player? I love the acceleration. I love the athleticism. You know, play instincts is where he's going to have to really get up to speed. You know, there are times where he's not as aggressive as you would like to to see him be, especially when you see the play happening and you know what's, you know, about to come. You fly down there. It's, it's different when you watch him versus his teammate Barnes or, you know, the teammate that's playing in a, a seek and destroy type role. So, Going in the third round, I feel like, okay, that, that's about where he probably should have gone. But I'll, I'll be interested to see how he improves in those areas uh, moving forward. But this this Chargers team, to me, um, you know, they got to be first in the division, right? Because according to everybody this offseason, they got a top two quarterback in the NFL, you know. Um, <laughs> but I, I just find all of this fascinating, you know. Either the quarterback is, is good to carry a team or he doesn't have enough help and weapons. And I feel like that only falls in line to wherever you feel as though you are on the player. If you like the player, he needs help. If you don't, he can't carry a football team. I just need Justin Herbert to not throw costly interceptions in key games and need to win to get in situations, then I'll be just fine. But this team is ready to compete. But like we just talked about, Charger going to Charger. But I feel like, you know, the one pick outside of Zion Johnson, Jamari Sailor, a fantastic pro- prospect. I love that dude. Can play anywhere across the front, so he yeah, may be a great the answer right tackle. You know, he may be the answer there. Um, and I talked to him at the combine. This dude absolutely loves the game of football, not just from a I, I get to be rich or I get to go knock people over. He has a true passion for football, and and you know, and you can see it take shape out there on the field for him. So I love that pick. So I think he could be a, a sneaky play at right tackle, even though some people view him as a guard. I viewed him as a guard, but some teams may view him as a tackle. But Dean Leonard, the seventh-round pick, is someone that impressed me so much at the NFL PA game. I was like, why is this guy not being talked about as one of the top-tier corners? Um, and then when I go and study his film, he's long, he's athletic, he could mirror and match. Oh, by the way, he was a CFL top his eight pick last year in the draft, but chose to not go play for the BC Lions, came back to school, played at Ole Miss, and was excellent. I feel like they got a steal here in the seventh round. So big fan of him and what he can do on the outside. Before I forget, Emery, I know we've talked about this. I remember a year ago, people were like, there's only one guaranteed first-round running back next year. That's Isaiah Spiller. Isaiah Spiller, he's awesome. And he goes in the fourth round. Like, what, what happened there? I forget. Draft fatigue, number one. And number two, um, he lands in an ideal spot. Also, Eckler has been, you know, clamoring for a sidecar, you know, for the longest because everyone said, oh, he should be the starter. He gets to be the starter, can't stay healthy. He knows that he's best suited to play a complementary role. In comes a foundational back in Isaiah Spiller who compares favorably to me to Jer- uh, Jeremy Hill when he was coming out of LSU and when he played with the Bengals and Patriots. So now you get a good one-two punch. I think he could be one of these backs that get a thousand yards as a rookie uh, and allow Austin Eckler to really thrive in an Austin Eckler type role. So he fell because we saw all these uh, Texas A&M prospects have quite possibly the worst pro day in combine circuit they could ever have. I mean, Wadabari didn't even get drafted and he was supposed to be a first round pick in the spring and summer. Uh, So I think that's why he fell. He didn't test particularly well, but his on field play is what matters to me. And this is someone I think is going to be their starter, allowing Austin Eckler to be that 1B and really thrive this year. Check them out, both of them on social media. That is the key moving forward. At F-Ball Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. He is at Ryan, O-H-A-L-L-O-R-A-N. If you like the Broncos, the AFC West at all, you got to be following Ryan. Thanks so much for the time, Ryan. Really appreciate you coming on the show this week. All right. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. All right. We will wrap it up with the AFC North next week. Other than that, the keg is kicked. We are all tapped out. 
Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and the Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.